Hello, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am Alana here with Jamie. How are you doing? Hi, I am doing well. You lie. <laughs> I'm battling I know a migraine. You lie. <laughs> battling you a here headache. To hear. Jamie Hampton told a lie on air. <laughs> I did. But if you say it, it will be so. So oh, I'm going to okay. say I'm well, fine. Then you're, no, you're great. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> no, I am good. I am good because I, and I always find that when I, when I come here to do podcast stuff and I'm not at a hundred percent, I come away feeling mm-hmm. so much better when I yes. leave. So I'm I do too. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm glad you are here too. The one person who is not glad that we are here is Gimli. Do you hear him whining in the background? I don't hear him. Oh, good. <laughs> and a strange turn of events, especially for summer. I'm totally home alone. So he is locked in our son's bedroom. So he doesn't get into things while we record and make a mess and he's not loving it. Oh, but poor Gimli. <laughs> I'm loving that we're here, and this is going to kick off kind of a summer mini series. So happy summer, and we're going to spend the next batch of of time uh, talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, and specifically doing a little guesswork and detective work, and asking ourselves, how does the Proverbs 31 woman pray? So. This can be loaded. What um, what connotations does Proverbs thirty one bring up for you? Well, we did. Um, we interviewed somebody. I think it's been years ago now about the Proverbs thirty one woman, and um, and I loved the way this person talked about it because it was kind of like I think when when I first think of it, it's a kind of ideal of a woman, like you read it and you're like, oh, this must be the ideal woman. And, you know, Mm -hmm. in Christian circles, when you talk about the Proverbs 31 woman, it's like, oh yeah, her, you know, the one that like Mm -hmm. does it all. She, uh, she's spiritual. She loves her family. She gets up early. She has a job. She's a homemaker. She, do you know, what's funny that's (laughs) that's what we read, but I think the connotation for a lot of people is that she's only at home right? Like you think of the Proverbs 31 women, I think our connotation is um, very much she's so focused on the home. The house is always clean. The kids are always presentable. She's probably got a larger family than average. um, And her life revolves around her children. Her life revolves around her husband. And those are great things, but we see so much more than that in this passage. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, I think there are two layers of the Proverbs 31 woman. There's the kind of like cultural connotations and then there's the mm-hmm. biblical truth of who she is. Right. Yeah. And, and in a yeah. way they're almost um, in certain extreme cases, it could almost be dichotomous, right? Mm-hmm. So that somebody who's really doing great in business dealings. Yeah. Proverbs 31 talks a lot about her in business. And there are some Christian circles where that would kind of be looked down on, you know, or why is I've had this asked to me or, um, whispered to my husband, why, why does she spend so much time writing? Why doesn't she spend more time, you know, taking care of the family, like a good, like a good wife would. So it, it can definitely be loaded. I don't know that there's a single woman who hears Proverbs 31 and feels excited. Do you know what I mean? Like when I say we're going to do a Proverbs 31 mini series, I can almost feel the collective clench, right? Oh, yeah. like the idea is, oh no, you're going to tell us all the things we aren't doing well. And I forget who told me, might've been you, might've been my friend. I quote all the time. Might've just been something random I read, but whoever it was talked about the Proverbs 31 woman in the context of a lifetime it's not saying that she does every single one of these good things every single day, right? So, and we've talked about this a ton. We have seasons where, yes, our family is taking 99% of our attention or work is taking a big chunk of our attention or ministry is taking a big chunk of our attention. And we never feel like we're giving enough time and energy to those areas that we feel are suffering And so I really liked thinking about that. This is kind of the lifetime, or at least it could be read as this is the lifetime 
accolades of what this woman has accomplished over decades. This isn't necessarily her recipe of what she does every single day. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And just, um, you know, that these are, it's kind of like the Instagram snapshots of the Proverbs 31 woman. I mean, of course she has mm -hmm. weaknesses, of course, you know, mm -hmm. but these are, these are things that, you know, over the course of time, like you said, she's, she's able to do. And if she's human, she doesn't do them perfectly, but yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like definitely it's something to glean from, but I don't, I don't think if it's, if it's making you feel bad, just going into it or making you feel like less than because you're not all of these mm -hmm. things right now. And right. as opposed to, these are things I can strive for. These are examples that I can hope to be over the course of my life, or these are goals that I can be moving closer to like one step closer to mm -hmm. as I go through. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. Lauren Cruz was actually the one I wanted to look it up because she's, um, she is the one episode 115 way back in the 100s wow he was so long uh, ago we were little baby podcasters i know <laughs> and it was called strength of a woman why you are proverbs mm. 31 it's a book and it talks a lot about and there's a devotional too but it just talks a lot about celebrating your place in proverbs 31 and not looking at it as um you know something that you're not but something mm -hmm. that's prayed over you. And, and she looked Ooh, at it, I, like I believe, that. as kind of almost like this is this is who, uh, you know, this is this is what what prayers are for who you who you are, who you can be in Christ and through his yeah. strength. But yeah, I well, may be paraphrasing wrong, but that's what I remember <laughs> from all those years ago. Yeah, well, and I love the idea of praying this over yourself, praying this over your daughters, praying this over the women in your life, praying this over a newlywed. Now, to be fair, like it might be weird if you just showed up to somebody like, I am going to pray for Proverbs 31 over you. This might be something that's more appropriate to do just in your own intercession time. But um, there are so many beautiful blessings that we can pray for people and and to me i feel like proverbs 31 can be used as a it's almost held up like a curse and not a blessing yes it's, look at all the things that she's doing and why aren't you doing these and so i love what you bring up like maybe this can be almost aspirational this is what we can be praying for. And yes, of course, the Lord knows that we're not going to do every single one of these things perfectly every single day. And he knows that there's grace and he knows that some days you're going to wake up with a migraine and just be, you know, nauseous and, and grouchy and tired. And he's going to give you the strength to get through that. And then on the days when you wake up and you feel great and you have energy to conquer the world, he's going to give you strength to, you know, to kind of increase your your output there. So I love the idea of, of treating Proverbs 31 as a blessing and not a curse because it really does feel like that's how most people treat it. Yeah. Just like one more thing that I have to mm -hmm. try to be like, or do, or, or aspire to yeah. be. Yeah. One more list of all the ways I'm falling short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's really interesting. Here's something I'm sure people pointed out, but I don't know that it's ever been pointed out specifically to me in a way that's like hit home. Proverbs 31 was not written to women. Right. Proverbs 31 was written to a man about finding a good wife. Like it starts out like today might just be our entry. We might not even dive into the verses themselves, but the very first part of it, Proverbs 31 verse 10, a wife of noble character who can find. And this whole chapter is, um, Actually, is it a mom talking to her son? I forget. Listen, my son. Oh, no. Okay. Like yes. Was it? It says the, the sayings, sayings of King Lemuel. Yeah. An inspired utterance his mother taught him. But his mother so, taught it to him. That's yeah, interesting. So it's the king passing down to his son lessons that his mom taught. So this is the, you know, grandma says. <laughs> and he's talking to his son about finding a good wife. And so- 
<laughs> picture yourself when you were like junior high or high school youth group Jamie and and you'd all be dreaming about like the future husbands that God was going to bring to you what would be some of the things that that you all would chitter chatter and dream about Oh, I mean, it would be like, you know, well, depending on the season of my life, like there were probably mm -hmm. seasons where, but I would say the the season of like, I'll, I'll, let's say college, like early okay. college, where uh -huh. it was like, okay, he's going to be a man of God, he's going to be a hard worker, he's going to have, you know, good character, he's going to be honest, uh, he will be kind to people. Um, mm -hmm. he's going to be tall, dark, and handsome. He's <laughs> going to, uh, you know, uh, like the things that I'm interested in. Um, mm -hmm. he'll be chivalrous, but respectful and <laughs> loving all of my ideas and, yeah. and you know, elevating me, you know, all the things, all the things, all the things. Well, and he's got to play guitar, right? But like, was that was always in youth group. It was always like, oh, right. Top of everybody's list. He's got to play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> right the youth he's got to be the the guitar player in the youth band yep exactly exactly so i guess i didn't never even thought about it your son must have you know ladies lining up around the corner <laughs> right yeah he is that guy pounding down the door right um so you think about that and and that's all cute and that's all fun and like i would add to that okay my things were he's going to play guitar he's going to be musical he's going to be funny that was a big one um, and yeah, he's going to love God with all his heart. He's going to be a great dad. He's going to work hard. He's going to be a provider and a protector. He's going to cherish me. Okay, those those are all beautiful things to dream, right? Like if I had a daughter and we were just kind of in daydreamy mode about the kind of man that we would hope that God would bring into our life, those would be the things we'd talk about. What has happened though is like, let's flip the script for just a minute. What if we wrote down this list, right? So picture, you know, uh, college age Jamie and high school age Alana are at a slumber party together and we're, we're making our list of the things that we want God to bring to our lives as a future husband. And we write it down. And then let's say that a thousand years from now, people are holding that up and saying, man, this is what God is telling you that you must be like now is there truth to it yes all of the things we mentioned other than probably like needing to play guitar are kind of like commands of god god does want people to be loving he wants people to be good parents but do you see the difference of like i am talking to my child about the kind of person they should desire to grow up and marry that is different than God said that you must be this kind of spouse or you're a terrible person. Do you get kind of the difference between the heart behind this? Yeah. And I think this has been used by, by men, by women, by the devil, by society. I think this passage has been used to make women feel totally inferior. And this, this kind of ties into our, um, our recent episodes about just guilt and how guilty women feel for not doing everything perfectly. So given that, um, we're going to be taking some of our summer episodes to really just dive in kind of verse by verse, section by section with the question of how does a Proverbs 31 woman pray? But given that, how how can we approach this just in the right spirit and not feel like this is just going to be another sermonizing of why we as women always fall short? Yeah, I like that approach for sure, because I don't I don't like falling short and being reminded of it. <laughs> well, you and I are both pretty short. I don't think there's any getting around that. <laughs> there's no getting around it. Yes, you're vertically challenged. <laughs> oh, well, do you, I'm going to leave it up to you. Do you want to chat just a little bit more kind of broadly? Do you want to wrap this up as kind of our intro? Do you want to kind of dive into the first section? Let's do this. Let's have this be our intro and and let's maybe just pray for the series and just for our hearts and for God's wisdom and just to kind of, um, you know, just for all of us to as we study this and look into it just for God to bring out the things that we need to hear and, and 
bring encouragement, that kind of thing. Yeah. You want to just kind no. of pray about I it rather than that. through it for this episode. Yes. Let's do that. And before we jump into prayer, um, let's just do a quick updates i feel like um this could be important going into the summer Mm -hmm. you've mentioned it but you have so much going on um we're gonna (laughs) we're gonna try to record a bunch of these um but yeah i mean your life is busier than i've ever seen you and that is saying a lot because you guys are perpetually busy um do you want to just give everybody kind of a quick update on what your summer plans are looking like yeah we are um i mean it's like we're hurtling toward the the busy part because we we've basically put our house on the market um this last week so as of what are we at june 13th is when we're recording so as of you know early mid-june house went on the market um we are waiting for that to sell before we can look at houses where we're moving and um in like two weeks oh man like two weeks from today we leave to take our son to uh, out to West Point, the service academy, United States Military Academy at West Point. Um, it's the Army Military Academy. Um, he had applied to several different ones, Naval Academy, Air Force Academy, and West Point, and he's at West Point. Um, so that is a big deal. He's It's college, but it's college on steroids, kind of, because yeah. we drop him off and he's kind of theirs now, you know, they make a big point Mm -hmm. of making it pretty clear that they're, they're now not yours anymore. We can't just come and grab him out. Like, you know, we'll get to see him again in August for, um, reception or I'm sorry for like, it's called a day, which is when they get like, um, admitted basically. And Mm -hmm. after the boot camp part of it. So beast beast barracks is between June and August. Um, so we'll get to see him for a couple of days during the days. He has to go back to the, the barracks to sleep, but, um, then we'll have like a parents weekend in October and, you know, we'll get to see him for holidays and things like that, Mm -hmm. but not as much as a regular college, definitely. Um, and it's, it's going to be pretty intense. So we're just really, you know, I'd say I'm definitely praying just for him to have strength and endurance and, um, I mean, I feel we've been praying all along, please close these doors to these academies if they're not God's best, mm-hmm. you know, if they're not your best for him, close the doors. And this yeah. door opened and he feels called to it. He feels like this is mm-hmm. right. And so do we. So I'm just continuing to pray that he get, has the strength to get through it and um, and to, that it would be a great fit, that he wouldn't just get yeah. through it, but he would thrive there. Um, mm-hmm. And then we get back and... Um, When we get back, we will be having movers come like the second Mm -hmm. week in July. Um, And then, you know, we're moving shortly after that. Actually, we're going to drive down the Alcan, the Alaska Highway, down through Canada in our travel trailer, which is another kind of my husband stressing about that part with the details Mm -hmm. and making sure everything's in working order and you know, we have our mile post and planning out, we haven't uh-huh. done that yet, but planning out where to <laughs> yeah. stop and where the gas stations mm-hmm. are and all of that stuff. Um, so it's crazy. Like it's just, yeah, it's a lot of stuff. And then wrapping up selling this house, which, you know, haven't, yeah, haven't done that yet. And I would love mm-hmm. for it to be really fast, um, but it's not yeah. going as fast as I had hoped. Um, so if any listeners feel like living in a beautiful <laughs> home in Alaska, that's uh, right. it's an Anchorage, pretty area. It's one of those homes like I, I really do just love and appreciate your home. Um, it just it's peaceful. It's calming. I have so many super fun memories. Like it's almost like in a way, like we raised our kids in that home together. And I know it's your home, but I feel like a, a half a percent of like, I'm losing my home too. Cause it, it has been such a big part of, of our lives back from when we yeah, lived in Anchorage and we're there all the time yeah. to where now, you know, anytime anybody's flying in or out of Anchorage, we get a, a free stay at the Hamptons, which I'm, I appreciate so much. And I'm going to miss. And just the, yeah, the, the times that we've spent there in prayer, um, all the conversations at your kitchen counter on those bar stools while you're making really good coffee (laughs) and 
I'm going to miss it. So if anybody wants yeah. a beautiful, peaceful, loving, prayer-filled home in Anchorage, uh, get in touch. <laughs> so I do have, I don't know if I shared this. This is kind of, a, this is an aside, but um, but one thing that I hope, oh, okay, yeah. Hope I don't get emotional. Oh, no. Because I'm oh. already, as you're talking, I'm I like. Know. Oh. I'm going to get um, there too. <laughs> yeah, but we, um, when we, we had the earthquake and, 2018 yes. and um mm -hmm. and so we had a bunch of foundation work done and we had our flooring some of our flooring had to be cut out so they could mm -hmm. put the helical piers underneath the foundation so we replaced the floors and while all of the flooring was off of the living room we had you know it was a time when like we had gotten past the you know, not sure if we could stay in our house, not sure if we right. could save the house because mm -hmm. it was so expensive, but we ended up getting a grant and a disaster loan that allowed us to fix it. And mm -hmm. so like all these things and looking back on like, basically it had been about a year since the earthquake at that point. It and, was an ordeal for you all. And God was so faithful and, you know, obviously he always is, but I mean, just looking back in God's faithfulness and um, we, before the flooring went in, I, all of the kids and, and Matt and I sat in the living room on the like concrete slab floor and we took Sharpies and wrote, like we read some verses about God's faithfulness and things about mm. like being, you know, built on, on the, on a found, firm foundation and just things, you know, the double entendre of our foundation being repaired yeah. and God's, you mm -hmm. know, and then and being unshaken, things like that, you know, mm. um, but just basically wrote down Bible verses that for us represented God's faithfulness to us and his um, steadfastness, even when mm -hmm. literally everything around us was shaking. And yes. so it was very that was very cool. And so my prayer has been that um, like, I just think of that. And when you said prayer filled, I just think like it mm -hmm. really is. And yes. And so I just, um, you know, my prayer is just that it would be not just a monetary transaction. Exactly. No, but there is that it something. would be a blessing, mm -hmm. you know, that, that this, the purchase of this home would not just be a blessing for us because we definitely need to sell the house to <laughs> you get need out to from buy under a new house. disaster yes. loan. But, um, <laughs> but that it would be that it would be an answer to someone else's prayer too exactly. and and in god's economy yes. it can be both so that has mm -hmm. been my prayer and i just yeah well i've been praying that exact same thing just so it would be mm -hmm. such a blessing to whoever does move into it because i know i appreciate it so much i appreciate what it has meant to our family what it's meant to me and our friendship like if the next owners of your home could find half a good a friend as you have been to me like then that would be a blessing so yeah just um i hope that everyone keeps jamie her whole family her son in your prayers are there any specific prayers for your son because there's a period of his kind of boot camp like stuff you won't even hear from him correct no we can't hear from him i think it's like halfway through they get to make one phone call and mm -hmm. it has to be like i don't it's like I don't remember three minutes, yeah. five minutes, maybe it's Yikes. 10, I don't know, but it's a, it's a short phone call, but yeah, so uh -huh. it's basically going to be only letters and they're going to be kind of few and far between because he's mm -hmm. not going to be able to check all the time. So yeah. I would say between um, July 1st and probably August 1st, something like that mm -hmm. um, is going to be kind of um, radio silent for him. So yeah. Um, yeah, definitely be praying. I would just pray specifically to keep him um, physically safe and just because, you know, no injuries kind of thing. It's going to be very mm -hmm. physically demanding. Yeah. Um, and he's been pray planning and training and, you know, trying mm -hmm. to, he's, you know, doing things. Conditioning. To, and conditioning stuff, yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely physically protected. But mostly from what I hear physically, it's not going to break you. It's the mental like being yeah. isolated my my biggest prayer is that he will find his people or person yep. and that mm -hmm. god will just allow him to connect with one or two or you know maybe even but that his whole squad yeah. i don't know what they call them i'm sorry i'm not very knowledgeable but i think it's a squad but his whole small the smallest group which is like yeah. six people mm -hmm. i just pray when he went to the summer seminar at the naval academy last summer his mm -hmm. squad was like 
awesome. And he, yeah, it made the whole thing for him. And so my prayer mm. is that he would have an amazing squad when he gets there, that they would, um, I definitely pray that God would place at least one Christian in his group, if mm -hmm. not more, but just mm -hmm. someone also to share his faith and, and to yeah. be able to be an, you know, um, encouragement to him. Yeah. Yeah. And that our house would sell. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that too. <laughs> well, yeah, let's jump into prayer and just basically, I would say, um, listener takeaways be praying of course please be praying for the hamptons and their move but also be praying for your home whether you you rent you're in transition you're couch surfing you're living in a car you're owning free and clear you're in a market um that whatever space you occupy would have that sense of protection and peace and blessing um i think that could be a great takeaway as well just you know i feel like um i feel like some western christians are resistant to this idea of like why is one place more special than another right so for example i got baptized i was maybe i was in high school and family friends of ours had recently gone on a trip to israel and brought back a little vial of water from the jordan river and they gifted me a vial of water from the Jordan river oh, wow. to put in the baptismal and me being, you know, a young teen and kind of, you know, like in my science world at the time, I was like, well, water's just water, right? Like, it's not like these are the same molecules that touched Jesus when he was baptizing there. And even if they were, it wouldn't make them more special. Right. So I think sometimes we're resistant to this idea of, um, places having, um, yeah. I mean, if God is everywhere, why should one place be more holy than another? Mm -hmm. And I do get that sense, but I also get, there are some places where you can truly sense God's presence more readily mm -hmm. than others. Or, you know, I think about in the old Testament, especially in the prophets and God talks about like the land is crying out for justice. Like if blood has been shed on this land, it's like the land itself is under a form of, of curse. And I don't think we need to get overly superstitious about it, but I do feel like there are spiritual things going on that we cannot yet measure with a little, little Geiger counter or something like that. And that the environment we are in does impact things like, um, our prayers, our emotional well being, and things like that. And, and your home is a gift. And, and I am with you. I truly do hope that whoever lives there next will see it as the gift that it is. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, how about I will, um, I'll pray and then you can jump in and then we'll call it good for today. All righty. God, I thank you so much for the chance we have to go through this Proverbs 31 series. I pray that this series would be encouraging and uplifting to every single one of our listeners. I thank you for your word, that every single word in it is so perfect and so powerful and able to give us inspiration and encouragement. I pray that you would forgive us just as a church and as a collective for all the times that we use this Proverbs 31 passage to berate each other, berate ourselves. Um, I just pray that you would be pouring out blessings on all of our listeners, be pouring out blessings on Jamie and her family, watch over her son as he's off to West Point. I just pray for such a great summer for him, a great transition, a great career, a great future. Um, give him those friendships, give him the encouragement that he needs, give him the stamina and protection he needs and um, thank you so much for the Hamptons home and for what it's meant to them, for what it's meant to me. Thank you for all the ways that you showed your protection and providence to them after the earthquake. Um, and we just pray that the, the next people who live there would know your love so deeply and be so blessed. God, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to focus on wisdom from scripture and we just pray that as we go into it, as we go into this series, that you would just help us each individually to glean the things that you're saying to us, um, free from any kind of uh, judgment or any kind of guilt or anything negative, that we would just go into it and see positive, that we would have, um, that we would have a direction to, to 
point toward that we would have um, even encouragement in areas that that we're doing well, that we're glorifying you already, um, and that we would just be able to to take um, positive things out of out of these next weeks that we look through this Proverbs thirty one passage. Um, and Lord, we just um, I just I lift up Alana and her family as well in their transitions with their oldest going off to college. That you would just pour out your blessings on him and on them, and just um, guide and direct every step. That he takes and and just give them wisdom as they um, take care of all of the things that they're dealing with behind the scenes getting him ready for that lord and just for um for their home as well god we just pray that it would continue to be a blessing for them and um for each listener god i just pray for each person to um just give them a vision of of a space that can be holy for them that would be like a, just a prayer space that um, if they don't already have it, where they can meet with you, where they can feel your presence, where they can um, just feel comfortable. And, and if it's not there, that you can show them creative ways to make that space possible in their home. Um, we just thank you for the gift of our homes, the gift of communication with you, and, um, and just the gift of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I thought of one more story about your house that I think is worth sharing. I think my favorite memory. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Which one? You tell me. Okay, maybe not. Was no, it, you tell me. Was it planning the podcast in the <laughs> podcast room? I loved that. I forgot about that. <laughs> we were jotting down things on napkins. That was adorable. In this very room. That's exactly, and yeah. It's a teeny, 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 tiny room. Like it you, It's, a, it's people... a closet. It's literally a closet. <laughs> <laughs> and and not a walk-in closet uh -uh. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> it's a sit-in closet it, it that's right <laughs> and yeah we were both in there there was like the desk there's a whiteboard no it was but it is prayer related I think it was still when we were doing good news club and my kids and I got to your house early we were going to pray together and then we were all going to go and meet your kids at the end of the school day is I think how it was going to yeah. go and then we were going to do good news club so we were at your dining room table and we looked at the clock and it was like I don't know 248 or something and we knew we had until 315 something like that like we knew we had a little bit more time so we were like okay well let's just go ahead and pray so we're praying we're going back and forth. Do you remember this? I vaguely, now that you're saying this, it's coming back to me. <laughs> We're going back and forth and back and forth. And I look at it in, in my, and I don't always pray. I don't often pray with my eyes closed, but I, I looked at the clock because I was like, we must be getting on toward time. I'm like 248. And my first thought was, wow, like God is just kind of stretching our time. <laughs> so that we can continue to have this really great prayer time. But no, your microwave timer had paused and it was stuck on 248. That wasn't the time. It was just what was on the microwave. Were we late or was it just I different? Think, I think we had to rush out. Like it wasn't yeah. disastrously late, but I think no, like, I oh. vaguely <laughs> remember that. I, I mean, I remember, yeah, now that you're saying that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so funny. Yeah, no, prayer will do that. It'll either make time go really fast or you'll feel like you get a lot done in a short amount of time. Like it can, it just yeah. seems to be kind of a time yeah. warp. Yeah, it does. Because the first couple of times I looked at the clock and it didn't feel like it had changed. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I was like, cool. God's just given us extra time to pray. <laughs> that is good. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I am excited to continue on our Proverbs 31 mini series. And I am also, um, yeah, just excited for what God has in store for both of our families and for our listeners as we go into summer.